So this is actually a follow-up to the BTS video for the Stro campaign that we filmed earlier this month. Um, and going back on those clips, because I was doing like a vlog thing while there, I realized that the audio was really bad. But yeah, I just want to tackle the first thing, the V&D. For some uh, reason, the mic the that I was using didn't work. I might have been damaged by my daughter who's walking up to me right now. In this video, we're going to be talking about this. This is the Zcam ND uh, electrical ND. And I'm going to give you my real world review and thoughts on it. Let's do it. Yeah. For those who don't know about Zcam systems anyway, so the PL and the EF mounts allow you to take out this little insert here and place in a electronic ND, which is, you know, Zcam's own invention, which is pretty awesome. It's very convenient. So this... <clears throat> so this... <laughs> so this... <laughs> so this ranges from 1.7 stops to all... Yeah. You gonna tell them? So this ranges from one point. Okay, I can do it. <laughs> so this ranges from one point seven stops all the way to six point five stops. I'll correct myself if I'm wrong, but it is a it's a decent range. Let me just show you how to remove it real quick, and then let's get to the testings, and then some of my experiences with this on the actual production. When you get this, make sure the arrow is pointing up. It's going to have a little arrow. There you go, like that. Make sure that's pointing up, and all you have to do is just insert this. Nice and slow. So yeah, make sure that air is going up. Hi. <laughs> make sure it's going up and you just pop it in and then screw it in. So obviously the next thing you want to do is just test out how these stops work. Are there any color shifts? Is it going to shift more magenta? Is it going to shift more green? Uh, so let's do that real quick. Hey, babe, you want to be my subject or do you want to be the camera out? All right, so I convinced my wife to be the test subject with our daughter. Here you go. And so I'm going to start with doing a uh, starting at 1.7. Now, the one thing you need to know about this ND, uh, there's no clear. So once you put it in, you're stuck with 1.7 as the lowest ND possible. So that can be a good thing and a bad thing. Um, and I'll explain why that was a bad thing in my situation while filming. Now I'm doing this in daylight and this will give us a, a clean image pretty much to see if there's going to be any shift. I have my cal uh, my white balance set to 5200 Kelvin, um, tint to zero. I'm going to be shooting wide open uh, at T2.1. This is the SLR Magic 50 APO Micro Prime. And that's pretty much the settings, ISO 400. Yeah, so uh, like I was just saying, this is starting at 1.7 ND stops. So I'm just going to just let it roll for a little bit and it's already overexposed. As you can see, it's quite overexposed actually. So now I'm just going to just dial this in from 1.7. Let's see, let's hit my quick release button and then let's go to, let's get to a decent exposure. Let's go down to, so I'm going to, oh wow, okay. I need to use the full, full 6.7 ND stops in this case because it's so bright to get this to a decent exposure. Obviously, I'm gonna show you more examples from the trip, but this is just like a in the moment <laughs> type of test. All right, so I'm gonna try to film this bit in the car. So as you can see, there's a major magenta shift once you hit the higher stop. So between 4.5 stops and 6.5 stops or 6.7 stops, um, it's a huge magenta shift. And I saw that when I was using the, the NDs on location when I was doing the production shoot. So um, I adjusted my tent to like negative 12 or whatever the opposite oh man that's dark we're, we're at the airport we're picking up caleb right now yeah i just adjusted it in camera um so it wasn't a huge deal since you're gonna be shooting in log but if you're gonna be shooting in rec 709 you might encounter a little bit more problems just because let me open up a little bit i'm at iso 1000 it's probably gonna look so grainy if you're gonna be filming in rec 709 you might encounter some issues because um it's pretty much baked in because of the Rex 09. So the first issue I kind of ran into 
um, with this ND not having a clear option. Since we were filming, we wanted the golden light, right? And uh, the light was going pretty fast. Adjusting my exposure and using a higher ISO was really just um, not ideal for this. Now this is the full frame camera. This is the full frame uh, E2 F6. Mm -hmm. And it does perform a little bit better. I was able to recover a few things. But here you can see these examples like some of my shadows, there's extra digital noise. It wasn't looking that great because I couldn't clear um, uh, I couldn't clear that ND. And so that was one thing I was kind of running into. Now, again, you can always plan for this thing, but the idea was like having the convenience of using the Indies internally and then um, be able to be as flexible with my exposure. Now, during the day, it was completely fine. I made it work for the most part. Go, go. Go where? Kind of going off a script right now, but this is the important part. So here's some key things I think can improve my experience and probably your experience if you're going to be picking this up as a Zcam shooter or if you're someone new who's new to the Zcam world and wants some flexibility with um, using ND filters in this system. Right out the box, the only way to control this electrical ND is setting a function button and allowing the up and down arrow keys to cycle through the ND filters. Now, that's a very slow process, uh, especially if you're trying to be as quick as possible. So like I was saying earlier on this production, we were hiking and so I had my camera out and for the most part, I, I hovered around, you know, four stops to six stops. But every time I did want to change it, just slightly just to keep my exposure consistent, I had to press the function button and then use the arrow keys up and down. Now, it's not like you can hold down the arrow keys and they'll cycle through pretty fast, or you can't even set a preset uh, to say like you want ND to be, uh, F1 to be ND.7 or ND or F2 to be ND.4. Like you can't set it that way. That would be a very functional way got all the kids behind me. That would be a functional way to use the Indies, but that's not an option in terms of customization for this. The alternative option, which everybody in the Zcam group would tell you, is to get the revolver handle. Now that's another 400 additional accessory to purchase. And I'm not really, I'm not jiving with that. I like my handle that I have um, just because I have my rig built out. So I don't, I don't, I don't like having the recommendation to buy another piece of accessory to use an accessory that I purchased. And I think the company should have the responsibility to try to make it more user friendly to reach a broader audience rather than say, no, you might have to purchase another piece of gear that's $400 to use it fast enough when you're doing shoots like this. Now I can get, I can, I'm gonna share my thoughts a little bit later to say why the Zcam was a great fit for that particular project. But yeah, I don't like that that type of response. So my recommendation for Zcam, this is the last time you're going to probably hear me say this, but if you can just update your app to have full control of the ND filter inside, that would just that would fix a lot of my problems because now I could just touch on screen, quickly scroll through and be done. That's all I need to do or have a better preset functionality in the next update for the Zcam. So if I wanted to set F1 and F2 as certain NDs strengths for that i want to do that pretty quickly that's all i want to do i know a lot of people are upset that you can't clear the nd or this and, that and the other i think that's okay um just know that i think i need to do better planning when i'm shooting outdoors let me just, just get a little bright little hazy is my thing smudged <clears throat> dang dude, you're just a highlight of this whole video now but overall like i was saying my experience was pretty positive it's just little things that i think Zcamp can do to improve it just through software updates. I don't need to buy another additional $400 accessory to make this functional. Now, just to finish up this video, a couple things that I need to note. Using the Zcamp system on a hike with Alex Stroh was extremely difficult. Um, I didn't build this as light as possible. There's some things I, I did need to have, um, like a mic, I needed to have proper batteries to kind of just keep recording, keep the camera going on for a long time, but that did add a lot of weight to um, the hike and that caused a lot of just issues with my physical health. So um, I know you already saw that I, be, I sold my S6, I'm gonna be purchasing a new camera and that camera's gonna be the Blackmagic Pocket. It already has internal NDs, I have a battery solution for it and I just need to get a lens. And that's a very lightweight situation, uh, lightweight setup where I can actually um, have a 1500 nit screen as well as a flip up tilt screen. And then I just need a top handle or a small cage and then I'm good to go with that. But anyway guys, I hope this video was informative. Um, stay tuned for the next stuff. Make sure to subscribe and like this video if 
uh, you want to know more Zcam content like this or just general projection content because I will be doing more of that because I got a few stories to tell you guys from last year's filmmaking journey. Anyway, my daughter wants me. By the way, guys, oat milk chocolate is delicious. It tastes like, um, uh, you've ever had like Rice Krispies, the chocolate ones, and then you drink the milk afterwards? That's exactly what it tastes like. All right, y'all, I'm out. Let's go, let's go play. Okay, go, go, go. Go, 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 go. You're so fast. You're so fast. You're so fast. <laughs>